Good morning. Welcome to the hangar today. I'm going to uh, work on some D sub connectors for the Garmin uh, installation. I've got a uh, back shell right here, the Garmin installation manual, wires I'm going to connect to all the sensors, fuel pressure and manifold pressure, and I got them all hooked up firewall forward. Now I just have to get things wired up to the D sub connector. Here's my spaghetti mess the D sub shell housing and I uh, got some wires going here everything's labeled I have all my uh, wires labeled got this wonderful uh, Dymo 4200 with some heat shrink tubing does an excellent job Re highly recommend it for everybody wire to label your wires and uh, Got an illustration of the back view of this connector so I know what pins go in where. It's all marked down here. As I get them installed, I check them off. Uh, notice I didn't check this one off because I made a mistake. Fuel flow, it's supposed to be in 22, 23, and 24, and I already put them in one, two, and four. Mistake. So I'm gonna show you how to remove them. We're using the tool you get from Vans Aircraft. Um, tool ICM insert extract that's the right tool you need to use we use the white end of it to extract the pins the red end is to install the pins but white is for extraction and I'll show you how I'm going to do that here shortly notice I have all my equipment set up that I'm going to cut back the uh, shielded wiring Put heat shrink on it with the ground wire as per the Garmin spec. And uh, all my stuff to do that is right here. I got my sockets, my clippers. I'll show you what I use this little tool here for. Strippers, heat gun, some uh, heat shrink solder sleeves. If you've not used a solder sleeve, this will save you a lot of time. As, uh, solder right here where my fingers are and sealant on each end where the color is so you can just slip that over your wires get it real hot with the heat gun and you can see the solder has flowed around all the wires there to attach that ground wire to the shield and uh, we'll get to that in a minute so yeah once you get your little supply kit out and your tools you'll be ready to go so uh, let me get this camera put down and show you how I recover from a simple mistake like that inserting a pin in the wrong D sub hole all right now I'm going to show you how I recover from uh, inserting the pins in the wrong location like I said the white end of the tool is the extractor you notice there's a little groove in here what we're going to do is snap that over the wire See, I've got this white wire inside there. Now what I'm going to do is insert this into the back shell. And uh, you notice there's a witness hole. I should have showed you that. But you need to push this down till the hole is flush with the top of the connector. Once you do that, what I like to do is grab the wire itself and pinch it up here at the top at the housing as I pull. And out it came. No problem. It's all totally reusable. There's a witness hole right here. So you need to put it in that far. I'm going to extract this one. Snap it around the wire. Insert it far enough to get that hole flush with the top of the housing right there. Give it a little bit of a twist sometimes. Get this wire and pin pinch it right up against the uh, white part of the tool there, pinch it with my thumb and pull. Out comes a connector. Simple as pie. Now we're going to put these in the right location. Fuel flow, according to my little sheet, the blue one should be in 24. So we got our illustration here. 20 is right here. One. 
Blue is going to go in. That's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Double check. No, blue is in 22. Wow. I haven't had enough coffee yet today. 20, 21, 22. Now you can push these in with the wire, but it's better to use the tool. Use the red end of the tool. Push this in. Let's try just pushing it. You can push it in and it clicks. I got some, I still got adhesive on here from that label. We'll put that label on there, put it on the wrong spot. Alright, blue was in 22. The signal, the white one goes in 23. Let's try that again. We'll get it started, pushing it part way in. Clean the adhesive off of that. Try this. Nope. I'll just push it in. Watch. It clicked. It's locked. I give it a little tug. It's fine. Orange wire. We're going to unlace it from here. I don't like things being all twisted around. Orange goes in 24. So there's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All those are verified correct. Push and click and pull. No, it doesn't come out. So that one's done. Get the old number two pencil. Mark those three off. All right. Well done with that. All right. Now I'm going to show you how I strip a uh, shielded wire and prepare it. Put the heat shrink on it with the ground wire. Um, I've done these so many times. I don't typically measure anything, but. As you can see from here, the shield covering is stripped back about three inches. So you can kind of guesstimate three inches, two and three quarters, something in that area. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. What I do is take a razor blade, single edge blade, press it into the covering. And if you bend it, you can see it split right around there. That works real nice set this down somewhere try and get the harness out of the way and then I'll just slice along the top edge of that put the razor blade down so I don't cut myself you can see it splits now just rip it right off All right then I work the shielding from the top up here a little bit and push it down kind of get it down here where I can bunch it at the bottom and then I bend it like this you can see I got some torn shields and take my fancy little tool I made from an old uh, pull cable you could use any little screwdriver or anything I like to pull these braids shields down Pull down where I can stick this right underneath through there. See that? Then I hold the harness, the the, sh the braiding, and I work the wires out. Look at that. Pull them right out. Pull this uh, ID string out of here, this piece of paper. Break it off, drop it in the trash. The braid, we don't need any of that, or we don't need much of it. What I'll do is I clip it off about you know, three eighths of an inch long. In the garbage it goes. Here's the wires we do need. What we're going to do is get our ground wire and I twist this together the best I can. flat here get my heat shrink solder sleeve get the solder right over that ball of wire there 
So I got my three conductors I'm going to use and my ground wire. I'm going to solder this ground wire right now. Heat gun's going to come on. Love this little porter cable gun. I crank it all the way up to high to do the soldering. Works great. I rotate it around. Hopefully you can hear it over the noise of the gun. Probably not. But uh, I rotate it around and get off sides of it. Keep the gun pretty close. There, I see the solder flowing. It's nice and shiny in there. Alright, so you can see where it got nice and shiny. The solder has flowed. And uh, that thing's still pretty hot. Malleable if you want to shape it a little bit. Looks real good. The blue has a sealant, so it is watertight. And the solder joint is done nice. So after it cools a little bit, I like to let them cool so I don't distort them. We'll go and strip these and put the D sub sockets on there. Section 5 in the manual will tell you to make these uh, about 5 16 long since I've done so many of them. I eyeball it and say I want it about that long. Hopefully you can see how much I'm stripping. And I'll show you how the other check I make on it once I'm done here. About that long. No point in measuring these once you get figured out what you need. Get out a socket. Now this is a socket that goes in this connector. You put it on the wire. You can see just a little bit of the unprotected wire hanging out there. And obviously there's a witness hole also on this and you know the wire's up there because it's, it's sitting on it right there. The old handy four pin crimper tool out here. Put down the wire. Every connection you make, give it a tug. Pull it. I'm pulling it pretty hard. That thing is going to come off. You want it to come off now. It'll cause you a lot of grief if it comes off later. Put the wire in the socket. I hold it up like that. Let's see, I got a little bit of uninsulated, uninsulated showing, which I know I stripped it enough. Get it on there, crimp it tight, give it a good pull, it's not coming off. Get the next socket, get it on the wire, hold it up, looks good. Get it all the way inserted in the tool. Examine it, and you can see the four indentations around the base of it, right about on that orange line. Give it a pull, it's not coming off. Another one done just fine. So, as I said, I labeled it. This one is manifold pressure. Manifold pressure on my chart goes in 12, 13. The blue goes in 12. Okay, where did my connector go? Here it goes. So, looking at my back view, you now I got one up here, two, we're going to go with blue and 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
Each one of these have a number on them also. Before I click it in, I always recount them. said they all have a little number on them but uh, my bifocals don't have that much power to them anymore or my eyes are too weak anyway there's another one all done ready to go and eventually we'll get that back shell put on here and we'll ground all the ground wires and uh, this will be ready to install of course, as I said, you can always make sure you read section 5 in the manual. You get to section 5.21 on electricity and electrical and wiring. One of the first things they talk about is D sub pins. Pins and sockets all connect the same way. It shows you what to strip, the witness hole in the connector, how to put the back shell together. What they really don't reference in this one is grounding of the shielding like Garmin expects you to do and that is spelled out in the Garmin manual if you look at the symbology you can see it's grounded at this end that's the connector it's not grounded at this end the shield is not so the notes are right here what to do how to do it you go back further in the manual it'll show you what you need to do of course you see I got my book all marked up, each device, each wiring uh, scenario, how I'm going to hook it up or not hook it up. Um, so that's what you need to do if you're going to do your own harness. Follow the plans. And keep working at it every day and get her done.